Caesar, the crowd pleaser. If you need to pick me up, ladies, we gon' change your demeanor. Caesar, the crowd pleaser. We gon' do a little dance, we gon' make the naysayers believe us. Hey girl, had a long day, you tired from work. Throw me some dollars and I remove my shirt. You can touch me too, these are the perks. Free yourself, lose your mind and go berserk. Uh huh, and go berserk. Uh huh, and go berserk. Uh huh, and go berserk. Make way for the bad guy. What is up, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Crowd Pleaser, the podcast that brings you the inside scoop on what it takes to be a male entertainer in today's age. I'm your host, Caesar the Crowd Pleaser, and this is going to be episode 42 of the podcast where we're actually going to be answering listener questions here. I brought two special guests on the show with me today to help kind of cover various points of view and answer these questions as thoroughly as we can. So first, I want to go ahead and welcome back on the show one of my great co-hosts. He's been on the show several times. He's a fan favorite. Well, welcome back, Mandingo Jones. How you doing, brother? Here I am. Nice to be back. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. I know it was a little bit of a last minute thing. We had some cancellations and whatnot. So appreciate you kind of being there in a pinch. That's why you, my boy. Anytime, dog. Next, I have a, a newcomer on the show, but a good friend of mine as well. He's uh, still in his first year of entertaining here at La Bear Dallas, but he shows that he has the work ethic and has just been doing absolutely phenomenal on, sh- on stage. He's a fan favorite. I want to welcome on the show, Bryce. How you doing, man? Great, man. How are you doing? Right. Pleasure to be here. Doing swell, doing swell. All right. So first, before we jump into the questions, I want to go ahead and plug in LaBear Dallas. This is where Bryce and I operate five nights a week, Wednesday to Sunday, 7 p.m. to 2 a.m. We are number one ladies destination in the Fort Worth, Dallas Metroplex. Divorce parties, birthday parties, uh, private parties. We'll even come out to you and bring our great show. Just hire any entertainer you prefer and we'll come out to you. So definitely check it out if you're in the area. Uh, Mandingo, you want to go ahead and plug in uh, the gallery, brother? Oh, yeah. Ladies, the gallery club is available from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Friday and Saturday. If you are looking for male dancers afterwards, It converts to a regular club, so if you're looking to stay and get your drink on or your party on, hey, feel free and be my guest. However, we are also hosting events from time to time on our own where we will have the club from 8 p.m. to 2 a.m. So just keep an eye out for those announcements for for whenever we'll be holding these events. More than likely at the moment, they will be on a Sunday, but um, that is up to discussion, and it's possible that it can change at any point in time depending on what event is being held so just keep your eyes and ears open for any of these announcements concerning the gallery club formerly hard bodies in san antonio texas awesome man great and also mandingo you've been uh due to the change in the club you've also been working on your own side projects man let's uh there's a new track you're gonna be dropping here soon isn't there actually yeah i've been working on a single for a while i'm uh it's called Number One Headband. Anybody who's ever seen uh, an anime called Afro Samurai would already kind of be like, oh, the Number One Headband. But, you know what I'm saying? I'm probably going to drop it right before the end of this year. I have actually quite a few singles lined up, but that's what I'm working on right now. And that's what I want everyone to hear um, <clears throat> the earliest. So also keep an eye out for that. I'll be posting about that on my Instagram. I post about that on my Facebook. I post about it on my uh, actual Facebook like page as well, which is easy to find. It's just H-E-N-E, Heaney. Um, I'll give you much more information about this later on in the show as it goes on, though. Yeah, we'll definitely plug in uh, how to reach you at the end of the show. And I'll also put in the show notes for people to check out and and they can click and whatnot. Uh, next, I want to go ahead and give a special thanks to my patrons on patreon.com slash crowd pleaser. Really appreciate it. These are my fans that feel like they want to give something back if they can't necessarily come to the club or if they can't just want to help all the side projects I do, i.e. like cosplay, creating more shows, my fire flow, my aerial and, um, this podcast so really appreciate it like your donations make a big difference in helping me further the show and do all the great things i do so truly thank you it is really appreciated 
Next, I want to give a special thanks out to all the people that came out to the Red Charity event this weekend and donated. Um, we had a school supply drive that helps us kind of supply the students that go to these um, low income schools and families and saves the teachers some money because a lot of times they spend money out of their own pocket to supply their students with what they need and or parents and things like that so the fact that so many people came out and donated and helped the cause really makes a difference it helps us give back and lets me know that it's a successful project and we should continue to do it in the future so once again thank you all so much for doing that uh all right well, with that being said, guys, we have over uh, 50 questions, so let's go ahead and dive right into it. Uh, yeah. Some of these are going to take a little uh, more elaborate of a answer than the other, but we'll see. We'll kind of move along as we can. Uh, I tried to filter them a little bit so we didn't have repetition, but every once in a while it may come out. So first things first, uh, Bryce, let's go ahead and have you take charge on the first one. Why have you chosen this profession versus something more mainstream, i.e. a nine to five job or something like that? Well, Caesar, that's a great question. You know, it's my own horn, but I have a bachelor's degree and I'm a male stripper. So a lot of people look at me crazy. Um, but for me, uh, growing up, it was never about, you know, looking up to Bill Gates it was about, you know, I looked up to athletes, I looked up to entertainers, I looked up to guys that I could relate to. Um, um, and so following school, you know, I worked a couple of sales jobs, ticket sales for the Texas Rangers, and I thought that was really cool. I thought that's what I wanted. And you know, I kind of got my parade rained on one day and then uh, got pushed back into reality. Uh, I actually met a LeBear dancer uh, while working in a car dealership. His name was Axel. Uh, he formerly was known as Austin. He was in the, the movie. And I sold him a, a car and, uh, you know, he asked me how much money I made there and if I was happy. And I told him it was more of a stepping stone than uh, a career for me and that I was looking for something else. He, uh, he then you know, told me I'd be good in his business and I asked what he did. And he said, well, I'm a male entertainer. And I looked at him like, you're a stripper. And he looked back at me and was like, yeah. And I was like, well, you know, I saw in the Magic Mike movie and, uh, you know, as I said, looking up to entertainers, Channing Tatum was always that guy for me. And uh, I kind of like, yeah, I listen to what you have to say, you know. And he invited me in the club. And uh, I came in, did an amateur night, just like everybody else does, embarrassed the living shit out of myself. And then, uh, you know, I came back eight months later, uh, still curious. And then uh, I just kind of stepped in and never left. Right on, man. Yeah, it it, uh, it definitely gives you uh, the ability to kind of start making money off of your creativity right off the bat. It's something that a lot of uh, people that specialize in stages and entertainment may or may not find or have uh, the easiest time doing because it's so competitive. It's so difficult to get paid for your talent. So and like you said, sometimes nine to fives just don't work for people. Uh, plenty of people end up taking other kinds of jobs just because it's not for them. Uh Mandingo, what inspired you to start professionally stripping? Well, first and um, in the back of my mind when I heard that question, this might sound a little bit, uh, to some people it might sound a little bit over the top, but I personally hate working for people. I like working with people. I don't like working for them. I've never liked working for people. I thought I wanted to work for people. Granted, I was an athlete, too. I played football for a, quite a while. People I looked up to, or, you know, I looked up to my few entertainers, and I looked up to, like, uh, athletes like Adrian Peterson, Sean Merriman. I was a football guy, so <clears throat> LaDainian Tomlinson, those kind of dudes. Um, but at the end of the day, they were still working for somebody else. They were high paid. They were highly sought after in many ways, but they were still working for somebody else. And even I also have a degree. Um, I just don't use it right now. And people, as like Bryce mentioned, people look at me crazy when I say that. Oh, you have a degree and you don't want to use it? It's like, nah, it doesn't necessarily work out that way. Not, not only do people's minds change as they go through their life, but also the circumstances in which they live, you know what I'm saying, change. So for me, male dancing actually was like y'all said an outlet for my creativity that turned into something a little more lucrative now as i mentioned before i don't like working for people 
and I want to work for myself and making music, you know, you're working for yourself uh, if you're independent. But the male dancing world, and, and honestly, I've taken a lot of L's. I've taken a lot of losses in male dancing. But those losses can carry over as lessons into working for myself as a musician. So male dancing gives me the opportunity to not only work on myself as a businessman for any area of entertainment, but it also gives me sometimes the free time to actually work the other craft that I'm trying to launch. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> and so uh, with that being said, what is your dream job? Man, I felt like I had so many. Originally, when I was younger, I just wanted to be a scientist. That's what I got my degree in. I got my degree in science. But <clears throat> right now, I believe my dream, I want to be on stages performing music. I want people to listen to my music. I want people to feel my music. I want people to share my music with other people. And like, you hear this in many different professions. It's like if you reach one person, you've kind of done your job. You know what I'm saying? I want to reach multiple people, but I get I I get a different kind of chill when I'm making music. It's just different. I feel like it's who I am. Like I feel like I am the music. I can't help but feel that way. You know what I'm saying? It's just always been that way. And I didn't start paying attention to it honestly until I started male dancing. I would kind of like brush it off. I listen to music all the time. Like I'd walk around campus. At school, just I wouldn't go from one class to the next without anything in my ears. I would stop. This is before really Bluetooth. So I'd unwrap all the headphones, put them in my ears, pick my song, and then we'll just walk. Like I would do that every day to the point of where it's like, yo, what's wrong with this guy? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If he's not listening to music, he's not doing anything. So I'm pretty sure that being involved in music heavily, being on stage, performing it live, People, you know, vibing to my music and enjoying it. That really is my dream. As far as science goes, I don't want to say it's a hobby. I love that too, but that's something I would be involved in a little bit later. You know, I keep, I brush up on the knowledge occasionally and I, you know, have books and everything. But right now, music is really where it's at for me. Hey man, and like we talked about earlier, you know, you're getting ready to drop a single and stuff. So you're you're slowly following down that path that luckily being a stripper has given you the freedom to do. So that's fantastic. Uh, let's see, what's the next one? Uh, what uh, What's next after stripping? So that one I'll go ahead because I actually get that a lot simply because I'm one of the uh, older strippers. So it's kind of one of those things that we get in general. Uh, for me, stripping is actually my end game. Uh, I'm pretty much using this to generate as much income as I can so I can continue investing in various things that I am into and uh, that you know my financial advisors thinks are good deals to where I generate enough passive income where I can retire, where I don't have to work to pay all my bills. And once that's done, I'm able to go back to school to learn all the things I wanted to learn. Maybe not necessarily to get a degree, but maybe take a class on engineering, take a class on chemistry, take a class on, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> on art, <coughs> uh, you know, video editing, all the things that I want to learn that's not necessarily focused because everyone knows I'm kind of a jack of all trades. Uh, the other part to that as well is the fact that it gives me the freedom of not being tied down anywhere so I get to travel. So then I can essentially mm -hmm. go to school in Italy for a semester and then go to school in Japan for a semester and kind of become world uh, traveled and educated and stuff like that. And, you know, not to mention uh, being able to visit friends and stuff because I'm not locked down to a job. So that's pretty much my goal uh, after stripping is just to retire early and live the fullest life I can. Uh, let's see what's next. What are the biggest misconceptions about male strippers? So Bryce, you are the youngest guy on the show right now. Uh, you actually came in after Magic Mike, the Magic Mike era. So why don't you take that one? Like, what do you think some of the biggest misconceptions about male stripping are from maybe that you saw and heard prior to becoming an entertainer? Man, that's crazy. Uh, pretty broad question for me. Uh, you know, I didn't even know you know, before coming to the bear, you know, I, I, for all I knew, I walked, I was going to walk into a, a whole bunch of naked men and, and not want to be there. So, um, I actually, 
uh, only saw parts of the movie. You know, I was hanging out with a girl and we didn't really watch the movie. And, you know, I, I liked the idea of it, but I didn't really pay much attention to it. And I didn't even know that a real club like that existed. So um, you always hear about women strippers, strip club capitals like Atlanta, Houston. You know, I didn't really know Dallas uh, did that. And I didn't know that male stripping was even a thing. So uh, for that to kind of fall in my lap and me be able to to be able to be uh, exposed to it was it was interesting to me. Uh, so when I walked in the first time, I, I had no idea what to think. Uh, but, you know, I didn't get to see a lot. I came in on a Thursday night. Uh, the club was kind of slow. And uh, I was more sitting there talking to Tom, the manager at the time, uh, and then talking to Axel, also, also who recruited me. Uh, I didn't get to see a whole lot. I saw a little bit of stage performance. Uh, it made me realize that it actually is a show. Uh, people think that you're, you know, male stripping is like a bunch of go-go dancers, you know, what, you know, just dancing around looking at people. And, uh, <laughs> It's a lot more than that. We put a lot. We put a lot into our work, and you know, definitely not easy. Uh, so I would say the misconception of, you know, thinking that our son can just walk in and uh, see a whole bunch of naked men. I, you know, I, I've never been to a place like that. But that's kind of what I thought it was. So I could only imagine what other, uh, another misconception is that we're I, all if I, I get, assholes. We're we're gentlemen. Hey, Bryce. Sure. Sure. It, it, no cussing on this show. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's it's all right. You're good. I'll I'll bleep those <laughs> out. But let's let's try not have me bleeping like the whole thing. But uh, real quick, just to interject on you, the I remember a couple of months ago, you actually had a couple of friends from high school come in and visit you, uh, whether they knew you were working there or not. Like, did, was there any exchange of like, as far as them being surprised what they walked into and stuff like that, or not really? Uh. uh yeah, I would definitely say so. I, you know, they, they, they told me that they, they never pictured me doing anything uh, like this. And so, you know, they say you're, you're kind of quiet. Why, why would you be, you know, you're out here like showing yourself. And uh, for me, I was an athlete. So being out there on the court was, was cool. I was exposed to a lot of people, but I wasn't exposed to people like looking at, you know, certain parts of my body and having to use that to, to make money. Uh, but they told me you know, that they had a good time, uh, that they, they would actually come back. And so that surprised me, uh, especially since these girls were uh, the goody two shoes. Uh, you'll never see me in a place like that type girls. You know, you go like the top two or three people that you don't want to see you in that environment. And one of those girls that was there was definitely, you know, fit that profile. So I was extremely embarrassed. And then to find out that she was actually into it you know, and texting me two or three days a week for the next month, you know, kind of worked to my advantage and also surprised me as well. Sweet. All right. Yeah, I, I think you pretty much hit the nail on the head. I think the biggest misconception we have is just the fact that people don't realize that we sell a show and a good time and uh, a, a, a real, like, good vibe versus just straight up, like, one-on-one -on -one sexual companionship, so to speak. Not to say that's all the women sell, but that's what we get compared to the most and it's not quite that. Um, but yeah, moving right along, we have how did your first lap dance go? I'll be honest with you. I don't remember my lap dance at all. Mandigo, do you remember your first lap dance? <clears throat> yes, I do. Oh, well, then by all means, go ahead and answer that listener question, man. How did my first lap dance go? Mm -hmm. Surprisingly smooth, honestly. At that point, it wasn't until <laughs> it wasn't till the end of the night. I was uh, on side stage with no knee pads, looking like a fool, and um, I it was just this chick approached me and was like, "Hey, oh my God, you're so yada yada blase blase." What you'll hear if she likes you, and she's like, "How much is a dance?" And I, you know, they told me earlier, so I was like, "Yeah, uh, 20. So I took her to our booth. I was dancing, and honestly, man, I think I was a little bit um. I was in that rookie stage. I was a little bit like it, it wasn't awkward and it was smooth, but you know, some girls just go really just for the experience and afterwards they really don't want anything to do with you. I had trouble interpreting that at first. So I was because I didn't know how it worked. I was like, is this girl into me or does she just want to give me money? Like, let me take her money first, dance, and then see if, you know, she wants anything else. And it was just kind of <clears throat> 
like that was my thought process but as far as the actual dance the dance was fine it was smooth like you know what i'm saying it was yeah i i really feel like lap dances are more um if they are going to be awkward or anything in particular it's more for them than it is for us you know because it's yeah it's part of the job it's what we do and i mean we don't sit there and give each other lap dance classes but we kind of like give pointers and <laughs> stuff to do especially for new guys and i feel like just having that to fall back on is enough like uh, like i said i've never really i've had a couple of bad dances i.e when girls are like grinding back up against me or like trying to that. claw at me but i've never had like a difficult dance so to speak um you know if anything it's just like a puzzle where you have to figure out what the woman wants and what to make her feel comfortable especially the ones that are like literally sitting on their hands and they're freaking out it's like no no like let's have a good time you know i get the question i, I get from those can i can i touch you that's what I typically get. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can I, like they'll look for like they're like your dancer for like thirty seconds. So like, uh, or I notice that they might think that, and I'm like, hey, you know, you can touch me, right? It's cool. You know what I'm saying? Just don't scratch me or bite me or lick me or kiss me. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much any exchange of bodily fluids is incorrect. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let's see what is the general age of a male stripper so honestly it is typically a young man's game guys in their early 20s are the majority of the industry but in truth we've had guys that are 18 all the way up to probably 50 uh, i mean i'm not sure because once we hit a certain age like people just don't ask but uh, yeah, I mean, huh. I, we cover the full spectrum because at the end of the day, there's someone out there for everyone and guys, some guys get better with age, you know, women like the salt and pepper hair or the beard and stuff like that. Um, so they're really, it's, it's, it's kind of the full spectrum. Like I said, the majority of people are going to be in their younger, early twenties. Um, also the job kind of takes a little bit of toll on you, uh, patients and social wise, if you're not the most social human being, just interacting with so many people on a regular basis. But and a lot of people use it as a stepping stone to pay for college or to prep for their next thing or to kind of give themselves time to pay their bills while figuring out what their next step is. But yeah, I don't think there's a specific age like this is exactly the age that people or men decide to strip for. Do you think the movie Magic Mike made male strippers up their game? Uh, Mandingo, go ahead and take this one since you were here for before the Magic Mike thing era and then after, correct? I was not. I was there right when, okay, I came in January of 2013, which was after the movie had been released. And the hype from it was still there, but it was only lasting, well, the first movie, it was only lasting for um, a few more months, I would say, at least where I was. Then the second one came out. Now, when I first came in, the Magic Mike hype and the work ethic of the dancers around me was already pretty high. So I came in and I was like, oh, I got to perform. All right, cool. I watched a couple of people and I was like, okay, I guess. I'll. And then I went off in my own direction after a little bit. And started, you know, just realizing, okay, high performance. I mean, I was watching like Cherokee, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. When I first got there, <laughs> like, dude was pulling out a different act every night. Like he would, he come out with some, he'd come out with like a zombie act with people running out from around, just out of nowhere. He'd come out with like a, a Wizard of Oz act. He'd come out with like an Iron Man act. He'd come out with like a a, a, a freaking Winnie the Pooh act. He'd come out with like, like he just had, he had them lined up and was just knocking them down every single day. And then he sold me an act. I was like, bro, how many acts do you have? So my work ethic was already pretty high at first, but like I would say the second movie came out, uh, it, it definitely gave us a boost because we knew now this niche market people are looking for if you missed the first one you did not miss the second one unless you were just too young to go see the second one and if you didn't see the second one you at least saw the first one so hearing about it they might not even have had to go see the movie our mindset was we're going to make sure they have something to see when they get there 
So I can only really answer this question uh, accurately in reference to the second movie. Because the first one came out before I started dancing. But as far as the second one, yes. I do think that if it didn't, then you're in the wrong business, first of all. It's that simple. <laughs> you ain't in the right business if something that's going to expose your market to the world doesn't get you in gear. Like, it's very simple. If that don't turn you on, you ain't got no switches. So leave the room. It's that simple. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't necessarily think it, it made entertainers have to up their game. Because, honestly, it's the reason why they made the movie was to show what we already do, which is it. We put shows on because... That's what it was. So I don't necessarily think it made people up their game. The only thing it might have done, m touching on what you said about the second movie, is the fact that maybe it might have made guys try to incorporate women more elaborately into their routines. With, you know, Because obviously uh, in the yeah. movie, they were definitely using the crowd very much so. But once again, we've talked about that several times on this show where those are you know, literally actresses designed and choreographed these routines versus us having random drunk women on stage that Yo, may or so may not hard. a corporate yeah so that's about the only thing i think would have changed I, I don't really think the guys were already doing what was showed in the movie in, in my opinion well so. what what i was i wasn't I, it was more in reference to because i at that time really could only speak for the guys that i knew so for example kc a lot of people you know what i'm saying around the time were like okay i'll just do this really good act i already have you know what I'm saying? KC was like, I'm going to make a new one. And I was like, you know what? That's not a bad idea. You know what I'm saying? So where I was, it made people step their game up because honestly, people had people started kind of going back to being like, uh, I'll just do my so and so act. It's Saturday. I mean, yeah, but, you know, I'm just feeling like just doing this, you know, it's three man. It'll be fine. It's not a bad act, but they have better ones. But when that Magic Mike 2 came out, they were like, with less women than before than they were talking about from nights or weeks ago, yeah, I'm going to do this act. It's like, oh, okay, so now you want to do this bigger act. So from my perspective, from what I saw, you know what I'm saying, people started to just do more and were extra at that point. They were willing to stay longer. They were willing to practice more. You know what I'm saying? Because they yeah. knew that market was exposed to the world. Okay. Yeah, I got you. All right. Uh, do you ever strip for charity? Quotations. Do you use your profession to give back to the community? Well, as I mentioned earlier, we actually just had my red charity event where we put on our great show for people to come out. But as they're coming out to see the show, they can bring school supplies to donate. So, yeah, uh, typically we really don't put our brand name out there when it comes to actual charity foundations and uh, things like that and events because of the fact that those charities don't want to be associated with strippers. So if it's one of those things, we kind of just do it randomly. Like, Hey, this is a bunch of dudes that are bringing to support this cause or whatever. Um, but yeah, we do do it from time to time, not officially. Most of the time it's either on our own grounds, our own event, which I know Miami also does, uh, several charity events during their strip offs and stuff like that, or, Hey, we're having a strip off. We're also donating X amount of the proceeds to this charity. So it does happen. And for exactly like you said, just to kind of give back to the community a little bit that has taken such good care of us. Uh, next question, uh, Bryce, why don't you take a shot at this one, man? Because you've obviously been traveling a lot with us and getting into the promoting scene, stuff like this. Do you hang out with female strippers, compare notes, swap stories, question mark? Uh, yes, um, absolutely. Although our you know industries are different in the in the way we entertain, um, the way that we maintain uh, customers and the way we create new customers is, is also one in the same. Example, uh, you know, we had a table at the Turtle Races at Backyard a few Mondays ago, and, and ironically, we walk in and LaBear's table is right next to Buck's Cabaret's table, next to Rick's Cabaret's table. So, um, you know, we're right there. Why not mingle with them? Um, you know, sometimes you get some good advice, sometimes you get horrible advice, but you just kind of take it with a grain of salt and, you know, you take the good things that you can gather and, uh, you know, apply it to what you're doing. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But at the end of the day, you wouldn't really, uh, want to get stripper advice from anybody other than a stripper. So I've, I've had a little success with it so far. Yeah. I, I think that's one of the first conversations that most people have whenever, because 
we like to compare uh, our industries because even though we're in the same industry, sometimes they can vary so much just because we cater to a female crowd versus they cater to a male crowd. And a lot of times they're just really curious because most of these women have stripped at various clubs and they kind of know how the industry works, but then they, some of them didn't even know LeBear existed. So it is something. Um, it's typically just normal conversation that happens across any industry when people from various jobs like even architectures or construction people meet up they talk about different techniques that you know to build buildings and stuff like that so um it's not unheard of obviously because there's a little bit of camaraderie there since we're all in the same industry it does happen and obviously female strip clubs serve food so sometimes the guys we go over there to have dinner and stuff like that uh let's see moving on uh do you think male strippers are respected more by their patrons than female strippers um honestly it's i think it's a hit or miss thing i i feel like there's people that i think the people that come into the clubs more regularly are going to naturally have a higher level of respect for both females and male strippers because they just understand the people on a personal level and know what they're doing versus the ladies and gentlemen that might be at their clubs for just one night or may be intoxicated. But I will say this, and I feel like a lot of people can back me up on this. Females, for some reason, feel like they can get away with them more. So they end up being more rowdy than men are. So both in female and male clubs. So, I mean, if it boils down to it, I feel like on an average, we probably get disrespected a little bit more than females do. Um, just because, like I said, for some reason, females, when they get intoxicated, they feel like they could get away with a lot more. And of course the peer pressure is a lot more of a thing, you know, they want to show off in front of their friends and stuff like that. Uh, what do you think, Bryce? I I agree totally. Um, although the stereotype, you know, with, with men, you know, like, like you said, you know, women, they do, they, they entertain in a different way than we do. Uh, so but it's different. Like the men, you know, you walk in, uh, you see a girl's breast, you see her butt, you see whatever. Uh, and you're kind of like, okay, I, I've seen everything and with us. It's a little bit more of a tease. We don't actually get naked. So uh, the fantasy stays in their mind a little bit longer. And whenever they're able to, to reach and touch and grab and, you know, we entertain using women on stage the way that we do, uh, sometimes they'll, you know, see how far they can go until you restrain them. And, you know, sometimes it, sometimes that stuff happens. It's just part of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. The next one. What is the most money you've ever been paid or the biggest tip you have ever gotten? So um, for me, mm-hmm. I would say the most money I've ever gotten, I don't know the amount. It would be on any one of my birthday events where – Pretty much all my fans show up in one fantastic night or weekend to just celebrate with me, and we have a great time. And they end up typically on those nights, uh, a lot of my closest friends would have saved up some money and come out and make it rain on me on stage just to kind of celebrate with me together and let everyone know their appreciation and me being appreciative of them and stuff. So once again, it's not one of those things where I count where we're talking about, you know, a stage full of ones and stuff like that. They do a great job throwing it up in the air and it just ends up being great. Um, so I couldn't tell you the amount. <laughs> it, I have no idea, but it seems like a big deal. Uh, either that or during a strip off to kind of once again, encourage the judges, encourage the fans, see part of the show because it just adds excitement. And, you know, we're really appreciative when people do that. Um, I've never gotten a gold bar or anything on stage. And then for the biggest tip (laughs) I've ever gotten, I would have to say it's still probably a motorcycle. I was tipped a motorcycle for once again, one of my birthdays uh, a couple of years back. Uh, and so, yeah, that's probably, I would say hands down the biggest tip I've gotten, uh, Mandingo, what about you, brother? Man, I'm, I do not know. I can't. Hmm. I would have to revert to my birthday as well. Um, I'm I. Uh, man, it's hard, I right? It's say, not something that it's, we like. That's a difficult keep track question of. to answer. That's a really difficult question to answer because when you think about it, you you don't really you you kind of just have it all given to you at one time. And I ain't get a motorcycle or anything to the point where I could just be like. Oh yeah, I, a motorcycle was repelled from the ceiling on that night, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But hmm, 
Yeah, I mean, we, you know, it's it's really tough because, like you said, like okay, somebody can make it rain on stage, you know, or someone can get three or four VIPs from you in one night. Like it's really, or like some people slip you money without you noticing. That's happened to me a couple times. You know, I'll walk yeah. off stage and all of a sudden I have like a fifty or a hundred dollar in my underwear, and I'm like, where did this come from? I have no idea who gave that to me. So for real, for real, that's something I honestly might not be able to answer that question. Yeah, uh, you got. I do not know. <laughs> you you have any input on that, Bryce? Uh, the biggest tip I've received, not necessarily. I mean, you never know where, where things come from. You, yeah, you know, Pablo does a great job of sweeping everything up, but you know, there are 30, <laughs> 40 ones, there might be a five, there might be a ten, there there might be a hundred. Uh, you know, the way the way we keep money in our lockers from previous days, there's there's you know, it's pretty hard to gauge. Yeah, um, and I've even sometimes like you don't even realize like I've got a call from Juice one time. He's been like, "Man, I yo, I was doing my laundry and I washed a hundred dollar bill." I'm like, "You didn't know it was in there?" He was like, "No, I had no idea it was in there. I don't even remember putting it in there." And you also got to factor in how tired we are at the end of the night. Like, I don't really, I don't count my money at the end of the night. I put it up, I come home, and I either start working on something or I just pass out. So, yeah, you know, it's hard, it's hard to really figure that out. Uh, yeah. But I, like I said, it's one of those questions where it's, it's not as dynamic. We don't sit there with a, a checklist or a scanner or anything like that to figure out exactly how it works out. Um, let's see. Next one. Did you just strip for the big, uh, no, uh, what is that one kind of goes with the earlier question. Uh, what is the worst tip you have ever received for what the patron expected you to do? Um, <laughs> so, I mean, honestly, I think what, man, there's too many to say. I think one of the worst ones that stood out to me was I had these two ladies come up to the stage and uh, they both gave me like a folded dollar at the same time. Like I kind of talked to them at the same time because they were both just partners in crime and they both tipped me. And luckily it was the last tips I got. And when I went back, I went to empty out my underwear and it turned out those folded dollars were actually $1 bill that they both ripped in half and each gave me half. So I was like, all right, well, that's kind of lame. Boy, I tell you. I tell you. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you're new, when you're new, you don't know what that is. You don't know what a good tip for what you've done is. So, you know, in the beginning, I would sit the countless minutes, you know, sometimes two, three minutes uh, and, and not know that, you know, I should I deserve more than a dollar for that. And, uh, you know, I get in trouble for it. And then, I, you know, I learned to, to dance. I've learned to step down on the step. I've learned to do, you know, little things uh, to kind of, you know, get better at that. But. Uh, I didn't really know for months, um, you know, how much money to to ex expect or, or what to do for it. So therefore, a very long time, it was pretty difficult. For me. You, you don't want to be rude, but you, you understand it's, sometimes you got to get back to work. You got to get back to dancing. You got to go help somebody. You got to cut that conversation off. Oh, uh, actually, you know what, Bryce, let me touch on that since you just. So have you ever fallen uh I hate to say like a victim or falling in a trap and they might not know they're doing it. <laughs> but when a lady walks up to you with a wad of cash in their hand, you know, $150, $200. And so you're dancing on them and then they just pull $1 out of that stack and give it to you. Like, have you Ooh. kind of. Right. Yeah. You, you see the stack and you don't know if she's going to make it rain. You don't know if you're supposed to lean back. You don't know you know what she wants from you and so you know you pull her up there you you give her your best shot you know for a couple minutes and then she smiles at you and pulls one dollar and tips you and, and you're just like wow and <laughs> uh, i agree that that definitely tends to happen sometimes uh uh i try to i try to dance a little bit and stop and then dance a little bit and stop but you know sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't yeah Okay, just something curious because that happens all the time. Uh, Mandingo, this is a good one I think you can take care of. For ladies on a budget, how can they come into the club, enjoy being there, but not insult the talent? Hmm. Yeah, on a budget, well. Um, I, I, to start you off, I, oh, go ahead, go ahead. I mean, if, if you want to go ahead, you can take it, but I have an answer. No, I, I just think that you don't necessarily have to go in there and make it rain on every guy. But if you go in there with, you know, what are, even 
even forty dollars and just give every guy that goes on stage or whoever you think put on a good show two dollars like that's enough to at least show some level of appreciation where it doesn't feel like you're just wasting space you know what i mean but uh by all means have your answer number one know what you're capable of like you just said if you know you got 40 or 50 and you want to show appreciation to everybody and hey there is nothing wrong with that however you got to understand if you want to get up close and personal with somebody, you want to know more about them, you want to get a dance from them, it's 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 obvious that there's going to have to be a little bit higher of an exchange. Now, if you have that 40, it's kind of difficult for some girls because they may want to get two dances from one guy or they might want to be able to go and tip everyone, you know what I'm saying? And not every time that they go in there with a... Uh, um, that much money or even maybe a little bit more than that are they going to be able to do that sometimes women run out of money sometimes women you know what i'm saying need to leave early for whatever reason oh i just got here oh no there's an emergency or whatever i have to go but showing appreciation to a dancer the best way obviously is to not only compliment them but to tip them like uh, uh, th- here's it, this is something that it's kind of a side note but when you compliment an entertainer which is awesome we appreciate any compliment that you give us but you have to remember that it's almost like the actions not almost definitely the actions have to back up the words that you are speaking i'm hearing this but i'm not seeing this you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. so first and foremost understand that these these men are working hard for you to come up and give them those compliments yes but it has to be accompanied by something monetary that's just it's it's just how it is it's why we're there i don't i don't walk around in my underwear outside because no one's paying me to do so <laughs> you know what i mean so when i'm in the club if you can't like it's also there's also a certain maturity level entertainers have to have they have to understand and it takes a few lessons to understand women don't they can choose to do whatever they want with their money. They can choose to do whatever they want. But if they want more attention, they want more of whatever from a guy, then they have to understand that maybe spacing out the times that you're in there so that you can do that would be better show up at special events and then when you show up at the special events go crazy or you know what i'm saying you could do the come every week with a little bit of cash and show love to everybody but i think maybe the best way to do that is to just space out the times that you know what i'm saying you go but while you're not there share with your friends your experience and let them know that they can come well, you're not there. Keep that revolving door open. Like, let people know about us. Word of mouth is one of the ultimate signs of respect when it comes to letting people. When it comes to like um, entertainment, besides purchasing whatever you're purchasing, or be- for like CDs or albums, or besides interaction at the club for the entertainers, word of mouth will get you know what I'm saying. Us more appreciation and more respect when you're not there so that's another big thing that people sometimes tend to kind of take for granted but i i think you definitely hit a very important point is that it's you you need to back up your words because at the end of the day we make our money off of tips and tips alone so sure. you know there there's nothing that like is kind of like a backhanded compliment to me or double-sided or to a double-edged sword for me when someone comes up to my side stage and tells me how much they loved my fire show or my silks show or something like that but they a don't tip me on side stage and then i didn't see them on main stage and i'm like well i mean i'm that's the best show I can give you. And don't get me wrong. I appreciate your compliment, but if it's not making me some kind of money, like it kind of defeats the purpose, you know? Yes, sir. I know. Exactly. I mean, I got to pay for fuel. I practice. I freaking burn myself sometimes, like both with the silks and the fire. It's one of those things like, Hey, I kind of need that active support to the, to know like, Hey, I'm on the right path. People enjoy this. I should keep doing it. 
versus, like, yeah. you know, when there's 300 people out there in the crowd, you do a show that costs you, let's say, $1,000 to put costumes together and music editing. You put on this awesome show, you're sweating and you're worked up and then you make like $4. You're like, well, maybe I might have worked a little too hard or did people not like this show? Yeah, I mean, that's one thing that I've also realized that sometimes you work too hard in certain aspects. And unfortunately, that's a crowd based thing. Some crowds appreciate you dancing harder more. Some crowds just like a guy that'll go out there and smile. And some crowd, some crowds don't like anyone. <laughs> so <laughs> you just got to roll with that. Yeah. All right. Moving right along. The next set of questions I kind of uh, clumped together because I feel like they're all the same conversation. So it's, uh, are penis pumps used before going on stage? Do you know of any strippers who stuff their G-strings? And uh, do you have to have a big penis to be a male stripper? So um, we really don't – it's not like a female locker room where we all, like, admire each other's boobs and things like that and compliment. Like, yeah, we'll tell guys if they're wearing a pair of underwear that might not necessarily look good on stage because it makes us all look bad and stuff like that. But, you know, it's not one of those things. But um, I know for us it's honestly one of the – least important factors for our show at least the vibe we give off and the crowds we appeal to so no one uses a penis pump as far as i'm aware of no one stuffs their stuff but once again i mean we dance too much and get sweaty and all this stuff and women grow up with us i feel like it'd be hard to get pressed um and yeah i mean it's just not as important as you would think like every once in a while we get someone that's like oh when are you all gonna get butt naked and things like that but honestly i i feel like it's a bonus, I guess, if you got it, but it's something that's not really practiced or really worried about at La Bear. Um, would you agree, Bryce, or do you got a different opinion on that? I, I, I would agree. Um, no different opinion, and uh, it doesn't it doesn't affect someone's ability to entertain the crowd uh, or make a woman feel special. So, as far as how it contributes to our job, it has no you know nothing. Uh, but uh, you know, you do have guys that will come in from out of town now and then, and you know that they're, they're they're humping the ground, but they're you know that their, their stuff is touching their butt or their back, and you're like, come on, man, you know you definitely stuff your stuff. You know, we've had a fair share of guys that will come through for a day or two at a time and do that. But as far as any full time labor workers or any of our coworkers that we see on a daily basis, uh, I, I I'm almost 100 percent sure nobody does that. Yeah. And once again, like I said, it's not saying that it's a bad or good thing or either way. Uh, there are other clubs that kind of emphasize a little more on that. Our club just doesn't, like you said, like we're out there to make people have a good time and make them happy. And, you know, how well endowed you are really doesn't come into play all that much. Uh, how about you, Mendigo? <clears throat> well, it's a little bit different for me considering that. Um, well, I'm black. <laughs> so depending on the crowd like okay I agree with y'all it doesn't matter in the place the clubs that we work in it don't matter at all honestly most of the time well most of the time it doesn't matter but um, for, for most people but for me I have noticed that sometimes uh, girls are expecting uh, me to either be aroused well, like they'll ask me, they'll be like, well, I just, "Do you not get turned on doing this anymore?" I'd be like, "Yo, do you understand that I'm all my blood flow is going to every other part of my body but there because I'm dancing? <laughs> like, if anything is all my brain is working harder than anything else. Like, why? And um, like Bryce was mentioning, there are guys that come in from out of town and they have certain ways of going about doing things, but I don't really see penis pumps like that. I don't see penis pumps. Um. Like you said, nobody be stuffing or anything. I think, man, yeah, it just depends on the crowd. It depends on where you are, the crowd, and the event that's drawing the crowd there. You should kind of know what you're getting depending on what kind of event it is. But as far as La Bear clubs and even at our club, it's not really that big of a deal. and Nobody cares. <laughs> yeah. I mean – it is what it is. Like I said, there's a, there's a time and place for it. I'm sure it's practiced in certain venues, but ours is just not a thing. Um, every once in a while, guys might dip into that using the whole like uh, silhouette on a curtain type thing and stuff like that. But yeah. once again, not that big of a deal. Uh, moving on, how often do you work out to stay in shape? Um, for me, it's a little different now. 
one, I'm a little older, and two, I use aerial, my aerial practices a lot. I, granted, I think it's a different type of workout, but it's still a workout nonetheless. So I actually am probably down to about three to four workouts actually in the gym a week for me, just because I'm also flying four or five times a week. So the supplement of the two kind of keeps me in a decent enough shape. And then obviously, most importantly, I keep a well-balanced diet for the most part. People like me a little bit thicker, which I may or may not be comfortable with sometimes, but so that's giving me a little bit of slack on my diet. Uh, how about you, Bryce? Man, I, it's kind of a lifestyle for me. You know, since I was a college athlete, you know, I worked out, you know, four to six days a week, depending on, you know, team activity and stuff like that. And then, you know, after being an athlete, I always wanted to, to see what it was like uh, you know, during basketball season, I would lose my muscle mass. And now that, you know, when I was done, you know, with college, I didn't have that basketball season to, uh, to make me smaller. So I was kind of ch- wanting to challenge myself to see, you know, how, how good I can make myself look. Um, and then, you know, LeBear just happened to be a good job for me to do that with. But, you know, I definitely work out a minimum of, of four days a week, but definitely normally five. And then, you know, I'll throw in that sixth day of cardio or whatever. Uh, And then on my days off, I like to play basketball. So, I mean, I would consider that exercise too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Being active is definitely part of the career. But I feel like once you hit a certain level, like if you're not trying to change your body style, you can more or less just kind of go into maintain mode, which helps because we already do other things. So, yeah. Uh, Let's see. How do you maintain your body here? Uh, Mandingo, you want to touch on this since you have some glorious locks as well as uh... <laughs> I mean, I typically shave it sometimes. Well, not my hair, obviously. My, my head, not my head hair, obviously. But as far as like my chest, I only I'm fortunate enough to only really grow hair in on like my chest, um, my lower extremities, obviously, and my arms. Don't really get anything. There's like a little, little bit of peach fuzz, but I do not grow hair on my arms and my legs, none of that, or back. Um, I just have a little bit of chest hair I got to take care of, and uh, my facial hair. I kind of, I kind of keep uh, like my chin a little bit longer. Every once in a while, my mustache is thinned out, shave it down. I got like a low like a little low beard on the side it's really not that much maintenance for me it probably takes me like full maintenance for body hair it'll probably take me like 10 15 minutes i use clippers anyway as far as for the hair on my head this is my pride and joy so it takes me it probably takes about two to two and a half hours to do my hair i'm sitting in a chair for like two to two and a half hours but i go so long without doing it that it's like worth it you know so body hair is not a huge deal for me it's fairly easy for me to take care of. Everybody handles it differently because some people have much more copious amounts of hair than yeah. I do. I, yeah. I do not grow hair that much. I, uh, I pretty much just trim my leg hairs just because it looks better on stage, you know, with less leg hair. And then I do shave my chest just because that's where the majority of women put their hands on. But that's pretty much it. I mean, I'm keeping a beard now and I don't do anything crazy else. I guess any kind of crazy forearm or hand hair I get like the fire boy singes off on a regular basis. So I don't really worry about that all that much. Gone. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think it's pretty easy. I mean, it's to each his own different body types. I'm sure the guys that have to shave every week and whatnot. Uh, let's see, Bryce, how do you pick out what to wear on stage? Well, uh, for me, uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, I'm a baseball player as one of my characters so i wear a baseball uniform uh as far as accessories uh i definitely use a wiffle ball bat instead of a real bat uh, just for safety precautions in case it decides to slide out of my hand when i swing it one day i don't want it to <laughs> pop somebody upside the head of me. uh you know that wouldn't look very good um you know my next one uh, i'm a surfer that's my that's my other character so it's pretty simple to put on a wetsuit. I don't really have to go on, go about, you know, how to zip it up or anything. I just kind of pull it up and uh, I'm ready to go. But, uh, uh, you know, I'm big on, you know, my hair. So, you know, my hair has to look good when I go on stage. Uh, I, I, strategi- I strategize which days of the week I shave so that I, you know, know how my face is going to look that particular day. Uh, uh, I don't, I don't like the actual baby oil the johnson and johnson oil i prefer like the gel or like cocoa butter or something like that for my skin 
My brother. Uh, but as far as the, as far as the uh, <laughs> shout out to ending on that one. But uh, as far <laughs> as uh, my actual attire for the stage, um, you know, it's pretty straightforward for my acts. Obviously, if I help anybody else with theirs, uh, I, I see what they want, what they want from me. Uh, you know, like you said, pretty much every every stripper has the fundamentals: a black vest, a fedora, a cowboy hat, tearaway jeans, and tearaway slacks. Uh, so if you have all of those, you're pretty much good to go unless uh, you're helping somebody with an act uh, that's theirs, which in that case, they'll have the, the uniform for you. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Um, <clears throat> easy enough question, especially with our routines and stuff like that. Uh, let's see where are we at. Why do male strippers always wear G-strings? Well, uh, I believe it's kind of like a state or a city mandate i i know for a fact la bear dallas does not wear g-strings anymore i think we used to way back when like early 90s late 80s but now we have to cover our butt completely and obviously our crotch some guys still wear fullbacks which are a little thinner i wear mine on stage when i'm doing my shower routine just because it's the material it's made of and, and the way it sits is easiest to deal with when it gets wet i.e in the shower but I typically like actually wearing the shorts. I feel like they're a little more secure for everything and let me a dance a lot more and not have to worry about stuff flopping around or anything like that. But B and more practical, there's more space to put money into. Uh, I have a hard time with the uh, fullbacks, like keeping money in there. Once, you know, two or three people tip you, you kind of run out of space and it starts falling everywhere. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mandingo. What, uh, what about your club? It's the same thing fullbacks and um or shorts over it you can't show any cheek um personally i like leaving things to the imagination anyway just a little bit because it's all about entertainment and i like to keep a certain line and level i wear shorts i would say i wear shorts most of the time now but if i'm aware of fullback it's because i'm just in the mood to wear a fullback or i'm trying to show off the design on it but sometimes I never really think about it whenever I wear it. I'm just kind of like, eh, I'm going to wear this today. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't, yeah, that's what I was about to say. Like, G strings isn't technically the terminology. So I guess they're referring to what would be the male equivalent of like a thong or something. I, I mean, not, not, in that. All these questions are off of uh, Patreon and social media and stuff like that. So not necessarily anyone has been in the club or knows the correct terminology. So I wouldn't read too much mm -hmm. into it. So you oh probably well if the G strings are referring to the fullbacks, them or aka banana hammocks as some of us affectionately call them, then that's just our mood. Like G uh fullbacks for some people, they're more freeing while for shorts, people are just more comfortable. I know entertainers that will never just wear a fullback. And I know entertainers who only wear fullbacks unless they have no choice but not to put something over it. So I guess it just varies. Yeah. And then obviously you run the risk, like the less clothing you have or the more flexible it is, the higher the risk of a drunk girl getting a hand on it and having issues. But well, such is you. life, you know, the risk of uh, the job. All right. Uh, how do you make sure you always smell good while dancing? So I'm actually slightly fortunate. I apparently, my sweat doesn't stink all that much. I, I And like I said, that's just because of the fact I've asked. I have a lot of people that have been coming to see me for years I'm very comfortable with. And whenever I feel like I might stink, I ask them and they're like, no. But I also am very uh, habitual about mouthwash, uh, cologne, and just wiping myself off and brushing my teeth and stuff like that. Hygiene is very important to me in general. And then we interact so close to so many people. I don't, you know, I don't want it to be an issue. So for me, every time I get off side stage or main stage, I, you know, wash, uh, mouthwash and spray some cologne. Not too much. I don't want to walk around, you know, soaked in it. But that's just some of the things I do. I wash my underwear all the time. I know that sounds like dumb but there's some people that sometimes forget to do it if i could be honest and things like that uh how about you bryce i have a, a locker full of goodies um <laughs> clone cocoa butter essential oil uh got some uh smoke away spray you know i like i like my green every now and then um 
Yeah, I mean, just kind of like you said, I shower before my first set. My sweat doesn't stink very much either. Uh, I have a towel. Got some uh, good products, and uh, you know, doesn't take common sense to know when you stink. Cool. Uh, move right along. Once again, what is patron etiquette 101? Uh, shoot, honestly, this is a loaded question. We could talk, make a whole podcast about it, which actually we have done. So I believe it is episode six of my podcast series. If you go back there, it is uh, La Bear Etiquette 101, and you can check that one out. And it pretty much gives you a run through, definitely for sure, La Bear, but also stuff that carries over to most other clubs. So definitely check that out because, like I said, that's a whole new podcast on its own. So we'll move along from that one. If you can touch, which you can, how should a patron tip and where do you like it? Uh, as long as they're not going elbow deep in my underwear, I'm pretty much okay with them tipping me. However, they want whether they want to fold it, whether they want to ball it up, whether they want to just stuff it on the other where I really I'm not too picky about it. Like I said, as long as they're not dragging their nails across my body or just going elbow deep into my underwear to give me a dollar, uh, that's pretty much about it. Uh, you have any special uh, instructions on that, Mandingo? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I'm fairly, I'm a simple man fairly simple you know what i'm saying Just keep it respectful uh, women typically like you say they get away with so much more than men in the club so um they'll they, they try their luck in many different ways uh especially when you're doing dances so as far as etiquette goes yeah just uh, etiquette is with like touching keep keep in mind that if you were doing this where would you want, like, as far as a woman, if you were doing this on the other side, where would you want a man to stop when he's touching you? Like, it's 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 not that hard to really think that. Now, everybody is different, but on a general scale, most women are going to be like, well, I don't want him to touch this. I don't want him to touch this, and he shouldn't be touching this. So flip that <laughs> and put yourself in our shoes. And you'll realize that, oh, okay, I shouldn't probably not. I mean, some women ask like earlier, like, oh, where can I touch or can I touch? Well, some women don't. And they're just like, I'm going to do this because what's he going to do type stuff. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure we've all experienced that. Even you, Bryce, being newer, I wouldn't be surprised if you've experienced that a couple of times. A woman yeah. just trying her luck sure. and being like, I'm going to do this. And he's if you he don't like it, he'll stop me. You know, that kind of thing. They, uh, they get, wanna, I mean, it. Occasionally, you run into those people that are going to be a little more frisky. Like They're okay with themselves. It's happened to me where I'm like, hey, I, I want to protect your modesty. You're like, I'm good. They're like, no, you could definitely do more. I'm like, no, really, I'm good. So, But I agree. You, you kind of want to <laughs> like be respectful on both sides of the coin. Um, and it normally works out pretty well. Uh, what are some of the things patrons should not say? Man, once again, it's a laundry list of things. Uh, anything that's like... I mean, not necessarily objectifying because really I feel like most of the guys are confident and really get that enough to where we don't really care. Um, I, if I would be specific, I think one of the trigger words that really gets all the guys is work for it when you're holding up like a oh. dollar because we're already putting on a phenomenal show that you've been watching for all night. We've gone to the gym. We've tanned. We've learned choreography. Like We've done so much that we are in the process of of currently working for that dollar if not if we haven't already so that i feel like might be a trigger word for a lot of guys but there's really nothing i mean if someone says something really horrible like we just kind of eye roll be like oh okay you're one of those ladies and that's really it <laughs> um uh bryce yeah. is there anything someone said that kind of made you like give someone like a you know a less than great look uh man i think you hit it on the nose i think uh you know quote unquote work for it that's uh you know there's nothing worse than uh you know you're sitting there on a sunday you've you've worked all week you can barely stand and uh you know i've been you know in my in, in my uh defense you know i do some flips and some stuff you know you do some aerial stuff it's really demanding on your body and uh, you know you're sitting there just barely uh dancing to and a girl walks up to you and taunts you with a dollar there's really not uh much worse 
uh, that can happen than that. But, you know, like you say, just be a gentleman about it and have it the right way. And, you know, they, they get the idea eventually. But uh, work for it is definitely the worst thing I hear. Oh, and that comes in so many forms, too. The way they say it, like, the, oh, yeah. that's, that, that's what was going through my head as soon as as soon as soon you were like, so what's the worst thing a patron has ever said? As immediate, immediately, I flash back to somebody holding a dollar and being like, what you going to do for this dollar? I'm like, yo, I'll moonwalk away from you. Yeah, no <laughs> joke. No joke. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to. Like, is that simple? Yeah, because I mean, I really feel like it's something like the, it's kind of like the middle of the road type stuff, because all the stuff that you would think is really bad, like, oh, you're just a dumb stripper. Like, I just I roll of that stuff. Like, it really doesn't get sometimes. To me. The, sometimes the patron doesn't understand and they think that it's acceptable to do that. So sometimes it's a learning curve for them not to do that. You know, they well. think that it's cool to walk up and, you know, wave a dollar bill in your face when really you kind of take that as a form of disrespect. Yeah. Or uh, I guess another one would be stupid human tricks, you know, uh, hey, twerk for me or like do this or do that. It's it's like, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm here for your entertainment, but not in the sense of like you tell me what to do and I do it, especially if they're uh, impolite about it. I, I guess that would be a thing, too. If someone wants me to put my hair down, I happen to have it in a bun. I'm perfectly all right taking it down. But the the delivery goes a long way. It's like, hey, is it okay if you pull your hair down, or can you please pull your hair down, or I would love to see your hair down. Something like that is a lot better than you need to put your hair down or put. Why is your hair not down? You know, it's kind of like, whoa, whoa. Like, there's no reason not to be polite and have delivery. common courtesy. So. Yeah, all about the delivery. Huge. Uh, let's see. Okay, the next one is about complimenting with. Mendigo did a really good job answering earlier. Uh, how do you feel? Ob- how do you feel objectified? Or no, do you feel objectified? Does that bother you? I kind of just touched on it. Honestly, I'm never feel objectified just because I am confident in who I am and what I do. So nothing that anyone says to me is really going to bother me. And a lot of times they're coming from a place of ignorant, ignorance, and they don't know who they're saying that to. Uh, Bryce, you've kind of been in the business the least, so you might potentially have the thinnest skin, so to speak, which I don't think you do, but do you have uh, anything to, to add to that? Uh, well, not necessarily in that sense, but I can say, um, it's easy to kind of, you know, sometimes get knocked off your own horse. I guess you being here for such a long time, uh, you can go out there and put on the same exact show and get two completely different reactions and still have that bulletproof attitude to walk off stage, you know, comfortable in your own skin. Uh, for me, I don't have that bulletproof attitude that you have just yet. Uh, um, so I, you know, I'll go out there and uh, feel like I have a bad set and pack the stage. And then, uh, you know, I'll, on a Thursday and then I'll go out there on a you know Friday or a Saturday and give it my all and think I nailed it and have, you know, half the amount of girls at the stage. So it's not about them objectifying me, but it's more about me. It leads to me maybe questioning myself and my, my own performance sometimes. Like, could you have done more, more or, you know, did you not make the icons you need to make? Uh, it's more makes me question what I did wrong. Well, that, that's a little different, though. That's just the professionalism you trying to perfect your show versus actually feeling objectified. You know what I mean? Um, no, I, I think having that is a good quality uh, no, because it keeps as- you hungry. Yeah, but as far as feeling objectified by a singular person or, or something like that, uh, I don't take it personal. You know, every every girl kind of has their type. And, you know, if you don't do it for them, then somebody else in there is. Otherwise, they wouldn't have walked through the door. Yeah. Uh, the next question is, do you like slash need to get high or drunk to entertain? Uh, for me, obviously, it's across the board. No, I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't do anything except entertain. And the, my close friends that come to see me and know me and I, I I'm – quote unquote myself with them they understand how goofy and weird i could be just sober uh mandingo i think you're on the same boat as me uh for the most part but uh do you have you want to shine some light on either your experiences personally or with other guys at the club on that one because i do know a lot of guys at least drink to take quote unquote take the edge off of the night um i don't really drink if the for me it doesn't i I don't feel good when I drink because <clears throat> it's just not good for my body. Everybody's different. Typically it ain't good for most people, but it doesn't like, I don't feel that I don't have to do anything 
except for put my <laughs> banana hammock on and go entertain and do what I'm doing. However, as far as uh, being under the influence of things, I have been and I am pretty regularly, but it's not alcohol and it ain't no hard drugs either. However, um, <clears throat> what I partake in is very good with helping me vibe uh, with my music. I feel my music a lot harder. I'm a lot more, um, not saying I'm a lot more into it, but it's almost like you can tell a difference. It's not that I'm entertaining less. It, I think I might be a little bit more eccentric as an entertainer. I don't have to do it. It's just fun. And it doesn't interfere with my job. That's the thing. Alcohol, and from my uh, my opinion, which you know, people can take with a grain of salt, alcohol brings out a lot of um, it releases a lot of inhibitions that don't need to be released when you're working. I feel like if I were to drink too much and too often, it would just wouldn't be good for me. So I don't have to be under the influence of anything to do this job. But it's fun to occasionally, well, for me, not occasionally, but whenever I'm actually like, you know, smoking, I'm a lot more, it's completely different than if I was just drinking. I have way more control. I think way more. It affects people differently. For me, I think way, way more. I'm actually more focused. I might, I don't, I've never been diagnosed with it. But I might have ADD. I'm not sure. Right. I'm much more streamlined in getting my stuff done. I'm like, okay, it, it even it even affects me at home that way. I'm like all over the place, and then I smoke, and I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I, I'm gonna do this, then this, then this, then this, then this. So it, it it can help me at work, but I don't need it to actually entertain. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh, cool. Appreciate that. Let's move on. How are we doing on time? Yeah, go ahead, Bryce. Why not? Uh, yeah, I was going to say for me, you know, when I first got, got to LaBear, I was, you know, I was so terrified of the crowd, you know, taking a few shots would, I guess, quote unquote, take the edge off, so to speak. But uh, I would never say there was a time where, you know, it's a must for you. Oh, I have to have this before I do this or before I do that. Um, you know, I am I am a no! smoker, but it doesn't necessarily affect you know my job. Um, it's it's one of those things. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. If I'm not, I'm not. A, no qualification for. Uh, okay, I'm about to do this act. I need to do this, or it's going to help me. Uh, you know, in this way. Uh, if I do have a drink, it'll be you know if a girl wants to take a shot with me, I'm more than happy to go have my usual Patron shot or whatever. But it's not one of those things where I'm asking people in the crowd to get me a drink or uh, need that for anything. Okay. Uh, let's see. Next one. Have you had any wardrobe malfunction? Is there anything special you do to keep your penis in place? Uh, I've, <laughs> I pretty much just wear underwear that fits me and that seems to do the job. I really don't think I've had the wardrobe malfunctions I've had are the Velcro on my leggings bursting. Like if I gain too much size or maybe uh, Pablo, our runner, ends up Velcroing incorrectly, or maybe a woman grabs them or something like that. They might come undone halfway through the routine or something like that. But, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, I just wear underwear that fits, and my shirts typically uh, do all right. I think I had one button-down shirt that was snug, so when I gained weight, it was a little harder to get off. So I would normally just have someone in the crowd take it off for me, kind of make a show of it. But that's pretty much it. Uh, let's see, Bryce, you have any issues? Man, uh, no wardrobe malfunctions. Uh, it, you know, I do, I do surfer, and I do have alcohol out in front of me, and I do believe there was a time where I dipped, I dipped the uh, suit into the alcohol, and then kind of caught on fire for a second. But uh, as far as like something flying off or something coming out, uh, you know, you already hit on wearing clothes that fit you. Uh, it's a pretty important part of the job, not to you know. It's not one of those things where you're going to you're going to walk around with something that's extremely loose. It's going to look unprofessional and then ultimately might make you or someone that you're helping look bad. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'll have a hard time unbuttoning something or supposed to take something off at a certain time. And, 
you know, maybe everybody has Pearl snap shirts for cowboy and I'm, I'm sitting there, you know, pulling my uh, buttons off individually. But as far as a malfunction is concerned, I don't, I don't think that, you know, I do anything in particular to hold anything in place. I wear a belt. Shoot. I have, <laughs> I have some input on this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You can go ahead if you if you uh, I didn't know if you're finished, Bryce. I'm sorry. Go ahead if you still got somewhere to say. Uh, yeah, I'm done, man. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. I'm done. Well, one time during my set, and it's the only time this ever happened, fortunately. But I had no idea until the end of my set, almost. I'm gonna have to get a little graphic here. One of my testicles was hanging out for most of my set, and I had no idea. I was so comfortable the whole time. <laughs> I had no clue. And then I was just standing in the spotlight and I looked down and I was like, oh, that's why everybody's acting so weird. This was like three years ago or something. It was crazy. <laughs> it was so funny. Like I look back on it and I laugh all the time. Apparently but, that's a San Antonio thing because Christian was on the show a couple episodes ago and he had the exact same story. We've actually talked about that. <laughs> we have talked about that. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know how that ended up happening, but I had I couldn't tell. Maybe I was just in the zone, in my act. But as far as wardrobe malfunctions, malfunctions across the board in other ways, oh yeah, I've had plenty. We actually have a lot of those over there. Um, I've had my hat fall off doing acts. Um, I guess a prop, but you can you can count a prop as wardrobe, right? Or do they have to be different? Like, I mean, I've dropped props, tried to play it off. Um, oh, here's a good one. I have shoes like those those black boots. You know those black boots I have? I go out there and I do the wand. Mm-hmm. Well, those aren't meant, those technically aren't meant for dancing. I had a pair of pirate boots like that. You've seen them when I did the Pirates of the Caribbean. They also weren't meant for dancing. I've been on stage before and the bottom of it just rip off while I'm on stage. Like that kind of thing. And I'm over here sliding around with one foot my toe kind of exposed and then my other f- foot is like <laughs> that one's like ripping off too because it's for some reason i jumped extra hard or it got caught on the end of something when i was moving around too much i've had several wardrobe malfunctions and i have seen several wardrobe malfunctions at my club at least um I, the only one as far as referring to like the full or in reference to the fullback was just that one time for me and as far as christian i guess whenever he did that but like full costume wise uh, oh and it gets even messier like tell me if y'all agree with this or not and also bryce side note i have done the pro snap i have been on stage when everyone else has a pro snap and i have a regular button shirt and i button it all the way up and forgot i have to take it off it sucks because you're over here rushing trying to get it off <laughs> being that, that last guy and everyone's watching you and you know awkwardly trying to take that last layer off they're already taking a knee you're just turning around <laughs> yeah I, I know exactly how you feel but yeah wardrobe mouth oh sorry whenever you have backups you might just not be for yourself but your backup guys their their costumes can take some losses as well you know what i'm saying like i've seen a, i've seen a yeah, lot no doubt. Uh, right. I, I feel like we have, our shows are so elaborate. We have so much stuff going on and our bodies change and, and we're so dynamic that we have, it, it increases the chances for malfunctions, but luckily it's nothing that we can't kind of play off and stuff like that. Uh, moving along, do you mind getting touched? Pretty much. It's never really been an issue for me, honestly, for as long as I've been doing the job, uh, the only stuff that obviously we've touched on a couple of times and I think throughout the, the course of this podcast is, you know, just the respect thing. Like, don't try to yank my hair, especially now that I have long hair every once in a while. Or even it happened to me when I had a mohawk. Like, ladies would grab my head and try to yank it. Um, that I don't oh approve of. God. Or clawing me, especially now that those sharp talon nails are a thing in style. Like, clawing me and drawing blood is not a good thing. Licking and kissing me, honestly, I, I, I'm i more worried about the people doing it than I am for me because, you know, they'll do it on stage and I'm covered in sweat and cologne and other ladies makeup and they sit here and lick me and I'm like, ooh, that can't be good. But um, pretty much those, those are the things like honestly, women grabbing my butt or like groping my muscles and things like that or even hugging isn't 
an issue. It's never been an issue for me at all. How about for you guys? Go ahead, Andy. Bryce. Go. Man, uh, my same. You know, you, you, you. I'm very controlled. Uh, when a woman grows me, when she gets to a certain area, I'm very good about like you know, you you do that thing. You know, you'll you put their arms on you, your shoulders or your chest or whatever. But at that moment, you know, I'll have my thumb and my middle finger wrapped around their wrist, so I can kind of control with. Uh, so as far as being in touch, I'm I'm you know I'm pretty good with that. But then you know you'll you know you'll lean back and then you know you kind of lose control for a second. Someone's going to make it rain on you. You got two or three seconds there where you're kind of exposed and. Uh, from time to time, you'll get that grabby person or you get that person that licks you. And kind of much like Caesar said, you're like, there's no way you actually enjoyed that just now. You know, I'm covered in, you know, cocoa butter and uh, sweat and, you know, other girls makeup, cologne and, you know, whatever. Have you. And it's just like, a, you know, if you're into that, then more power to you. <laughs> or when girls hug you really tight and they start leaning back that tries to like pull you off stage. That's a little. Annoying. Oh, God. Some of these girls don't know how strong they yeah, are. Cause you're, cause my knees, my knees sweat a lot. So I. Bryce, you there? Yeah, oh. I'm here. Okay, there you go. You you got really quiet for a second. I didn't know if you lagged that or not. So your last thing we heard was your knees uh, sweat a lot. Oh no! Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, like you said, you know the you'll the girl will kind of lean back and kind of pull you to her. Uh, you know, I said, you know, my knees sweat a lot and that for me, that's either going to pull me down and light my shins on fire for all of my weight being on my shins, or I'll just, you know, they'll pull me right off. Not knowing that, uh, you know, I'm that easy to slide off the slate, off the stage. Yeah. They're lower than you. They don't realize they're lower than you and they can just, Ugh! and then if they do, if you're just at the wrong moment, taking a step, one foot up, or you're not set a certain way, you can just, who. Yep. Get oh yeah. Off the stage. Yeah, you have, no, you have no. You have no traction. Getting touched for me. Is, I mean, I'm, obviously, I know I'm gonna get touched. Like I'm. That's what I'm in the business for. You know, they're touching you. They're appreciating your body, work you put in. But at the end of the day, I just want somebody to be respectful. But um, I, uh, this drives me crazy. I forgot to mention this. I'm so glad you said this, Caesar. I hate when girls think because my hair is long that you can just. At least without my permission, grab it and just like yank it. My problem with my hair specifically, there each of them is an individual lock. And when a woman just grabs like two or three of them and yanks it, I'm in danger of you pulling them out. Because there's like like you know I'm I'm, I'm very I actually got really angry at a girl in Houston for this. I got so mad so quickly that as soon as I told her to I was like, I was like, yo, chill out. And then I was like, oh, wait, I'm on stage. But I couldn't help it. Number one, it hurt. Number two, you know, like I said earlier, my hair is my pride and joy. So I was, it wasn't that I even just felt disrespected. I was worried about her yanking my hair out, like piece by piece. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't mind being touched, but I just, you guys, just be respectful, you know? Yeah, most definitely. Uh, let's see. What is your favorite song to strip to? Uh, for me, honestly, I, it goes with my moods and what I hear. Like it just, it's my vibe. Like sometimes I feel like stripping a rock. Sometimes I feel like stripping a hip hop or maybe shoot. If there's a song that I just picked up somewhere from a video or something that I'm feeling, I give that a shot on stage. It's, there's really no like go-to song that I always go to. Um, it changes much like my personality does and my show presence or stage presence and all that stuff there. Yeah. There's, there's no one song that comes to mind. Uh, how about for you guys, uh, Mendigo? Uh, it fluctuates like on mood, but what I have been dancing to a lot lately and I assume they mean like while we're undressing or taking tips, I assume undressing, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I'm dressing cause that's a little, that's a, that's still pretty showmanship -y of us. I would think. Right. Right now, I noticed I've been undressing a lot to two songs. Um, I can't pick a favorite, but I will give you those two songs. One, I Need You by Lloyd. And uh, two, Nice and Slow by Ball Greasy. I know y'all know Jen out there. Jen knows about that guy, Ball Greasy. He's a Florida mm -hmm. artist, and it's starting to make its way out here, the song. But, but uh, 
Nice and Slow by Ball Greasy and I Need You by Lloyd right now are my two favorites to actually take clothes off to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, let's see. We're All right. So we're getting close on time. So let's get like two more questions in and then uh, we'll maybe have a follow up episode in a couple of weeks or months to answer the rest of them. Uh, let's see. What is the number one thing a woman can do to impress an entertainer? Bryce, why don't you uh, kind of give us some insight on that one? It doesn't have to be for you specifically. It could be more general if you want. Uh, um, well, I mean, everyone appreciates compliments, obviously. Uh, uh, but, you know, you'll get the girl that walks up and tells you how great you are and how beautiful you are. And then, you know, five minutes later, she's in VIP with another dude. So really kind of like what we touched on earlier, um, we work on tips and tips alone. So tips is the best way to show our appreciation. So if I get off stage and a girl uh, wants to take me to VIP, that means a lot of times um, she kind of wants to get to know me more as a person. Uh, she appreciates the entertainment that I provided. And she's, uh, you know, that's kind of caught her attention, but she wants to know more. She wants to, uh, you know, have a real conversation with me. So I would say VIP time would probably be the most, uh, you know, a, you know, way of appreciation for me. Yeah. Yeah, that, that that makes sense. It definitely for more than a more than the show, I guess. No, I understand it because it shows that they understand what we're doing as a career choice, and you know, supporting what we do. So that's totally understandable. Uh, let's see, next one. When you are giving a lap dance, what would you like the woman to do? Uh, for me, it's pretty simple. I just want her to have a good time, honestly. And it doesn't. There's nothing in specific that that has to be if she wants to just sit there and talk she can sit there and talk if she wants to just grope me that's fine um you know within respectable parameters if she wants to laugh and crack jokes with me that's cool too the most important thing like i said is just that they enjoy the time that we spend together mandigo what about you man absolutely nothing sleep as i stand there no i'm joking <laughs> I was to dude that's I epic like <laughs> just take a nap i'll play with your hair and tell you when the time's up <laughs> But in a, in, a, in a perfect world, nah. I'm just saying, like, um, like you said, really enjoy yourself. Um, I mean, I don't. I'm in my mood. Sometimes I just want to dance, be all sexy. Sometimes I just feel like talking. I'm I'm fickle like that when it comes to the job and when in private dance experiences. But I go off the energy of the woman. So I just want the woman to be respectful and to not be too shy. Because I like balance. If a woman's too shy, it's hard to do your job. If a woman's too crazy, it's hard to do your job. So just, you know, keep it cool. Have a good time and try to respect the boundaries that are obviously set in place, you know? Sounds good. All right, gentlemen, I think this will end our Q&A portion of the podcast. Uh, we still got about, honestly, about another 15 questions to go, but we're already getting up Ooh. there in time. So we might have to do something, like I said, a follow-up episode. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and move on into the best and worst events of the week. We'll start off with our worst events because I like to end the show on a positive note. So actually, it's kind of funny because you had just mentioned this, Bryce. My worst event of the week is actually a little interesting dynamic and i it wasn't necessarily that uh, actually i'll just go into it so i was on stage did my show to someone that i actually recognized i'm not close with her but i recognized her waved at her and her friend and stuff and they waved back they didn't come up to my stage and that was fine uh till the end towards the end um it was earlier in the evening so it wasn't a packed stage or anything i was performing i kept dancing because why not we had a bunch it was a weekend night we had a bunch of First timers in there, so I wanted to make sure I put on a good show for them. Eventually, uh, the lady in question came up to me and came up to my mind state, my main stage to talk to me, but it did not tip me at all, which I do find a little disrespectful. So I was still polite. Everything was great. She went back to her seat. I went off stage. I went to stage two. On stage two, another entertainer that's a, a more recent ad addition to our roster was on stage, and he apparently isn't the best dancer, which is okay. Like, not everyone has to come to the club knowing how to be a Magic Mike, you know, Channing Tatum type dancer. That same woman comes up to my side stage, once again does not tip me, and then says that I need to teach him how to dance because he is horrible. And so I immediately went to correct her, like, hey, there's no reason to be rude. 
you know, everyone has to learn sometimes. Mm-hmm. And ironically, uh, or not ironically, it makes sense. He had money around his stage. So I even told her, I'm like, look, if you take a look up there, it seems to me like he doesn't need to know how to dance that bad <laughs> because he's doing all right. But she went ahead and said, well, he still stinks. You need to show him stuff. And she was really rude about it. And I was like, all right, well, thank you. I hope you, you know, you still have a good night or whatever. And so I went about my business, you know, such as life mm-hmm. and things like that. Later on in the evening, not too long, probably about two hours later, I'm in VIP doing a dance. And as I'm getting up to leave, I'm escorting the lady out of VIP. And I see her in a walking into VIP with the same guy that she was giving me crap about on main stage. And uh, it, it was just... It had nothing to do with it had nothing to do with the fact that she was getting a VIP from him. Like, hey, I'm glad he was making money and stuff, and she managed to show some appreciation. But just the entire dynamic just didn't make any sense to me. Like, how could you come up to me and be rude to some another entertainer that's still trying to put on the best show he can, only to come find out like later on you end up getting a VIP from him? Like that made no sense to me, and I I don't know. It was just a weird interaction, and and it kind of rubbed me the wrong way. So yeah, that was my uh. Least and favorite event of the week. How about you, Bryce? Well, um, I actually hurt my back. So I guess the most unfortunate uh, event of this week was me being injured and not actually being able to attend your Red Charity event. Uh, So a real specific example for work. But what I do remember about the week prior, uh, I guess my favorite, um, I, I believe it was Sunday. Or it was, or it was this past Wednesday, the only day of the week that I did work. Uh, I'm not not particularly sure, but um, I had, I don't know if you guys know, comes in a couple of days a week, and uh, she brought me a Texas Ranger mug, uh, and it was you know, Texas Ranger baseball player from one of my acts. So uh, I guess she saw that one day. Uh, so I guess it was cool for me, uh, for her to see a Texas Ranger mug and think about me, the, the fact that I. Put that in her mind, or she thought of me when she saw that. Kind of made me pretty good. And then her uh, bringing the mug to me uh, uh, and giving it to me while I was on side stage was definitely a surprise. Uh, and then I looked inside the mug, and there was a couple of wristbands, uh, little Texas Ranger wristbands. So uh, you know that baseball act was so bad when I started doing it. I guess for someone to show any sort of appreciation for that, I guess was pretty good for me. And then for her to do it in form of a gift that I could drink my coffee in was even better. That's awesome, man. I'm glad. Yeah, it's definitely the little things sometimes when people can kind of like solidify the fact that they really pay attention to what you're doing and who you are. That makes a big difference. Uh, Mandigo, what's your uh, worst event of the week? Um, well, man, here we had this event uh, last night, which I – Cordially invited Bryce to. He couldn't make it. Sorry about your back, man. That sucks. I I know that feeling all too well. Um, well, unfortunately, last night did not go as smoothly as I nor our host wanted it to. Now it was him throwing his first event, and first, I mean, first, anything's can be really rough, you know, especially when you are the figurehead of that. In the figurehead of anything, you can get blamed for a lot, which, you know what I'm saying? But due to the changes of that our club has underwent, some of the guys have gotten a little bit lackadaisical about certain aspects of trying to make things run properly. There were a lot of guys late yesterday, and I was I was actually very pissed off about it because it affects everything. When you're late to an event like this, that you don't have that much time. You don't have time to wait on everybody to get there. You need to make this list. You need to go through whatever you need to go through. Guest guys got to get their music to the DJ. New guy, uh, guys who are there already need to do their get their music done. Whatever, like if you get some last minute stuff done, like like, like there's lighting. There's all this different stuff. There's props. There's everything that you need to get done anyway. So why would you be late? So I have guys coming in here late when we had the meeting the day before and it was known every single person that was late was up there. When we said you need to be there at seven o'clock, I live an hour away and I'm getting there at 
uh, what I get there? I got there like six, six thirty yesterday, and I live an hour away. There wasn't any much of an excuse. Now people would say that you know I'm working and all this, and I'm like, okay, well, first and foremost, you knew at least a month and a half in advance that you were going to be doing this. If anybody, you know, say everybody has stuff going on, and some people, you know, occasionally, yeah, I couldn't make it because of this. Understandable, but almost a lar- like a large portion of the roster. That's just telling me y'all don't care. That's telling our host you don't care. He was kind enough to do this. And unfortunately, as a domino effect, that made things a lot harder for us to get uh, give our out-of-town guys where they were supposed to go. You know what I'm saying? Because I had a guest from Houston. I had, uh, I had a, 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 a Brian down here. I had him. Uh, I asked him a while back uh, uh, to come by. He was like, yeah, it's the first time. I'll go check it out. This is my first time down there. And there's a bad impression because I'm over here setting the list up and everything's getting moved around because all these late people that are coming in. So my worst event of the week would be the fact that our lackadaisical sense of respect for the structure that's supposed to be in place, especially now that we were going till 2 a.m. since we've only been going to 10 has made it very difficult to um, have a smooth running show last night and left a bad impression on somebody who had never been there before. That's my worst event of the week. Yeah, it's a legitimate gripe for sure. I've come across that myself in my events, so I totally understand, man. You try to maintain as much professionalism and you really need the support of everyone involved for that to happen. Yeah, and next time we made it very clear. And then if you don't promote the show, if you don't show up on time, you're just not working. You're not even doing dances. I don't care who you are. You're going home. Fair enough, man. Fair enough. All right, and once again, I'd like to end the show on a good note. So, Bryce, you already gave us your positive, which is fantastic personalized gifts with the Ranger mug. For me, I actually had the pleasure of meeting one of my patrons this past week she was in town for a business function and she's been a long time listener of the show she once again pledges every month uh to support the show on patreon and she ended up letting me know hey i'm gonna be in dallas is it okay if i come visit i was like please by all means do and she did and it was just really great to meet someone one of my fans from out of town that you know, I've known for a little bit, but just never met in person. And the fact for her to actually come out, see the show that she's heard so much about and meet her in person, give her a couple of hugs and stuff like that was just really rewarding for me. It really kind of was another reminder of how great this job is and the people I meet and stuff like that. So it made my week small, small gesture and stuff like that, but it was great. So I can't complain. Uh, Mandingo, how about you, brother? Yeah, first of all, small gestures can build up. Sometimes you just need a small gesture, man. Sometimes you just need one. And they'll come when you don't expect it. It's been like, oh, man, all week has been this. All of a sudden, bam, small gesture. Wow, okay. Somebody does care or whatever. So that's awesome for you and awesome for you too, Bryce, because I, I know how that feels. Something small can just make you feel so much more appreciated than you did before, Definitely. especially when you care about it. Um, for me... I'm trying to find the the goodness and the light in the week. And now I think about it, I saw someone who I hadn't seen in a while. Her and I have been, she's been coming to see me for a while. Um, she was kind enough to get me the microphone that I'm using right now. Uh, she was kind enough to, you know, help me along with my music career in that way and also with a, a laptop. So, um I had been traveling a lot. So whenever she'd go in to see me, you know, she works a lot. She's busy. So sometimes, you know, you just miss things. And I was, if I say I'm out of town a few days before and you don't double check, you want to try to, because, you know, women love to surprise you, you know? I, I typically like, don't surprise me. Check with me, <laughs> please. But she wanted to surprise me and I wasn't there. So knowing I was traveling and how busy she is, it was really hard to reconnect with her. But she came to see me on Friday and I was there and I was I was very I was excited to see her. I lit up and it was just very um, that was probably the best experience of my week concerning 
our industry because you know every once in a while you get those uh that sort of clientele that you're actually a friend with like not to say you're not friends with everyone else but i personally my uh quote unquote clientele i'm friends with them and when i don't get to see them in a room full of people who are you know new to this like we've talked about earlier who don't know what to do in a room full of people who could be judging you in a room full of people could who could say something like oh yeah you need to teach this guy this and then do what she did all of that is something you can't control but when you see that one person or two or three people whatever that you might not have seen in a while that you know is going to come in there and do their best to make your night and you can actually have a conversation with and don't feel forced to have a conversation with you don't feel awkward you just blend. You just blend with that person. And that's it 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 relieved a little bit of my stress. Not necessarily because she was in there tipping me, but because, you know, it was nice to see somebody who genuinely cares about you and what you have going on in your place of employment. Nice, man. So well was- said. Well said. No wonder you're a good lyricist, man. You got away with words. I try, man. I try. All right, gentlemen. Well, I think that's a show. Uh, real quick, I want to plug in our reunion party at LaBear Dallas. It's going to be happening September 21st. We're going to be bringing in all the same great entertainers we have every night, including uh, probably anywhere from 7 to 12 retired entertainers that come back. Sometimes they perform. Sometimes they just hang out for everyone to catch up with. So definitely... Be on the lookout for that and check it out. Uh, Mandingo, is there anything you want to plug in, man, like your hit single coming out? <laughs> Let's hope it's a hit. That's what I'm hoping for. Um, for anybody who's not familiar with it, there's a... Uh, uh, can y'all hear me? Yeah, yeah, you're good. Okay, I thought I heard a little disturbance in the forest real quick. I was going to say, if um, for anybody who's uh, not familiar with it, there's an anime called Afro Samurai. It's very interesting. It's pretty bloody. It's pretty gory. Eh, but it's human nature. You know, every once in a while, you got to let that out. That's why we watch football. See people get hit sometimes. But um, I'm releasing a track called Number One Headband here soon. Um, like I said, I want to do it before the end of the year, if time permits me, hopefully. I'm working on that as much as I can, dropping a few other singles as well. But that's going to be the main, uh, the main course, so to speak, right now. So um, my SoundCloud is... Uh, you can find me under H E N E hyphen train. Um, I'm still getting all of my publishing for Spotify and Apple Music and uh, Title, all of that Pandora. I got to get all of that together. But I will be on Bandcap soon, selling a few exclusives on there that won't be on Spotify or uh, any of the other platforms. Now, you can find me on Instagram under Heeny Train. H E N E train one word no underscore no hyphen no forward slash and you can find me on Twitter at a H E N three train one word with the number in the middle of course that three um, my music page on Facebook is H E N E Heeny and you can find my dance profile under Mandingo Jones as well on Facebook. Those are my plugins. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Bryce, where can people reach you at, brother? Well, well uh, you can find me at LaBear Dallas at 2102 West Northwest Highway, five days a week from Wednesday to Sunday, 7 p.m. to 2 a.m. But if you're asking about my social media handle, uh, my Instagram is at Polish Prince 23. It's P O L I S H underscore Prince, P R I N C E. And handle is all. Kowski, M-A-N-I-K-O-W-S-K-I, 23. And those are the, the two most uh, prominent forms of social media that I, I use. So uh, Instagram at Polish Prince 23 at uh, Barman and Kowski 23. Awesome. Uh, and myself, Caesar the Crowd Pleaser. You can catch Twitter and Instagram is Caesar LaBear7. Facebook is Caesar Goyaso. And then you can catch this podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, and YouTube, Caesar the Crowd Pleaser. 
And then, of course, CaesarTheCrowdPleaser.com, which is all things Caesar, including photos from my photo shoots, my cosplays, my routines, and you can even catch the theme song to this uh, podcast on there for purchase and download. All right. Once again, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. Mandingo, thank you so much for taking the time, especially in a pinch last minute to be on the show for this. Really appreciate your insight and knowledge as always, brother. No problem at all, man. Just let me know. Bryce, first time on the show, man. You did fantastic. I'm really glad you were able to get on it. So thank you for that. Absolutely, man. I'm happy to be here. All right, everyone. Once again, thank you again for tuning in this week on this episode. Hopefully we answered a lot of questions. If we didn't, by all means, we will get to it next show or message them to me on any social media and I'll add them to our queue next time. Until then, keep bringing the rain. I am focused, I'm in my zone. You can binge watch like Game of Thrones. Reserve your judgments, don't throw no stones. Who's in I scream as loud as you go? Airplay mode on tablets and phones. Caesar's crowd pleasers is now on. Caesar, the crowd pleaser. If you need to pick me up, ladies, we gon' change your demeanor. Caesar. Crowd pleaser, we gon' do a little dance. We gon' make the naysayers believers.